You know, about one million people here in the New Orleans area are without power and without air conditioning on a very hot and humid day in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. Right here behind me, you see some of the damage that was left behind here in this area. You see this building was destroyed by the hurricane. There's even a car park nearby, right over here to the right-hand side of your screen. That was crushed by bricks, but fortunately, it does not appear there were any injuries here. But the situation is becoming desperate for many. In addition to the power being out, stores are closed, and it does not appear public transportation is running. A lot of people told me that you see in this video, they're running low on food. They're running low on water. And they were really running out of options when they took items from the store. One person said this was simply about survival. Others counting their blessings, including a woman we spoke with from the West Bank of New Orleans. I'm relieved that it's over. Um, I'm relieved that downtown didn't flood like it did for Katrina. And I've seen pictures on Facebook of like all the down power lines and building building damage and so forth. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of anxious to get home. And home will likely be dark and pretty hot, at least for the foreseeable future. The CEO of the local utility telling the local newspaper in part uh, it will likely take days to determine the extent of the damage to our power grid in Metro New Orleans and far longer to restore electrical transmission. However, a lot of people just breathing a sigh of relief and very grateful. We actually just spoke to the woman who owns that car. She's obviously upset their car was destroyed by those bricks, but she says she's just grateful to be alive. Kelly, back over to you. Frank, uh, one question for you. You know, we hear a lot and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the disruption of oil production and, and that as a regional and national story. Uh, but locally, there's been a lot of concern about the hospitals and particularly their ability to keep operating on uh, auxiliary power if they can't get gasoline supplies to the hospitals. What do you know, if anything, about the state of the of the hospitals in in and around New Orleans? You know, Tyler, I'm not aware of that much of the hospitals, but the gas situation is becoming, well, very difficult, to say the least. As our drive in here was from actually the east. We, we flew to Atlanta and we drove here. We saw so many utility trucks stopping and trying to get gas. We saw them filling up gas cans. As we got closer and closer here to the New Orleans area, it was harder and harder to find gasoline. In fact, the last few stations that we stopped at before we got here, no gas at all, no gas cans. And we saw a lot of these utility companies lining up to come in here. We also spoke to people that are staying in hotels, locals that decided they wanted to get out of their house and come to a hotel, hoping that they would have power and air conditioning. They say many of these hotels have told them they don't have gasoline, so they can't power their generator. So they're in a kind of a very similar situation that they would have been in their home, but just in a hotel now. It's very interesting. This is what I was hearing on a report this morning, is that the gasoline issue is really uh, sort of metastasizing throughout in lots of other ways, hotels, hospitals, and the like. Uh, and obviously, you saw it firsthand. Frank Holland, thank you.